everybody. Welcome to Simply Sterile. I'm your host, Carol Malone, and today we're going to talk about insulation testing. The first thing you want to do is read the IFU for your insulation tester and find out what PPE you are supposed to be wearing. Uh, typically, it's gloves to help uh, reduce and prevent shocks. So I'm going to put my gloves on. The next thing you want to do is check your tester, make sure you have battery power. Get yourself set up and get ready to go. So I'm going to hook my cord up. The first item that we want to test is our laparoscopic instruments, and we're going to set up our machine to do that. So we're going to put our pass-through item on there. The one thing I wanted to talk about is that most folks know that we're supposed to be testing our laparoscopic instrumentation. However, uh, Amy put out an amendment um, March of 2022, and in that amendment, it uh, also stipulates we should be testing bipolar forceps, insulated bipolar forceps, such as these. We should be testing insulated scissors and scissor handles. I know that's a clip of plier, but it's got an insulated handle. We should be uh, testing and looking at cables and cords for nicks and cuts and things. We should also be testing um, leaf instruments and uh, insulated GYN instruments, which I do not have any samples of. And so I wanted to point out the amendment and the items that we also need to be testing and kind of run through those items with you today. So the first item that we'll run through is something that, again, should be very familiar to most folks. So this is a monopolar laparoscopic instrument. So I'm going to connect it to my insulation tester while wearing my PPE. I've already tested my tester. I'm going to run it through. I always want to choose the smallest hole possible to get the best read. So it's beeping obviously because my metal tip is metal and I have my thumb down. I'm pushing down to get a good read on the bottom. There's a fail. You always want to make sure you go to the very tip because a lot of times there's a fail there. I'm going to pull up so that I'm hitting across the top, running back. There's another fail. So this instrument has failed. However, I still want to test this metal handle just to see. And I already can tell you that it's going to fail because everything I have is broken. But I wanted to show you what a failure looks like. So to test my handle, I'm going to swap out my attachments. I'm going to put the brush in here. Again, you may have a different insulation tester, that's fine. However you attach your attachments, most come with the brush. You want to take your, your instrument close your back, and you want to run it through, run it gently over your instrument. There's a fail, there's a fail. So this, this is failing miserably, and again, I knew it would. Um, and I wanted to point that out. Now you want to flip it over, do the same thing on the back side. Again, fails miserably. But the thing I wanted to point out is when it's failing miserably, especially around the handles, when they throw the current through in the OR and the doc has their fingers through this, they're going to get shocked. So it's very important if you have any metal handles, laparoscopic instruments, to make sure that you're testing those handles every time. So off to the repair room. The next item that we want to test is our monopolar, I mean, I'm sorry, our bipolar forceps. So you want to get your alligator clip connected on there. Take your forcep. I want to clip across both your prongs. Now we're going to just run the brush again gently across your instrument. Again, there's a fail. And then you want to do it down this side. There's a fail. I can see it sparking. You also want to run it on the inside. Failing on the inside. So this is um, not a good instrument. Again, it's important. A lot of the fails are right here where the fingers are going to be. So they're throwing a the current. Doc's got their fingers here. They're going to get shot. It's not good for the doc. It's not good for the patient. It's not good for anybody. So you want to make sure that we're testing any insulated forceps, bipolar forceps, and so on. Uh, these are also failures. There's a lot of nicks and cuts and dings in these. This one's missing a tip. 
So we also want to test scissor handles and the coated handles. So this particular item is a clip applier with a coated handle. So when we connect our item and we test the handle, we can see that it is failing. So what that says to me is that there's cuts and cracks in this coating, which means that there's bio burden underneath here, which is not good for patient care. It probably needs to be removed and recoded. And then here's just some more examples of scissors with coated handles that we would test and make sure that this coating is intact and sealed and that there's nothing underneath it. The rest of the addendum does talk about checking our cords and making sure that there's no separation of the cord at the distal, there's no separation, there's no cuts, there's no nicks and fractures um, or lacerations or gouges. The last items that are on the list that I don't have any samples of are miscellaneous coded instruments, which could be your GYN instruments, such as leaf instruments, coded speculums, coded snaculums, and things such of that nature. You're looking for gouges, separations, nicks, and cuts. Well, I hope this information was helpful to you. So let's get out there and start insulation testing everything. Take care. Surgical trade.